we are in the historic town of Newark for the third Pikes and Plunder Festival and with over 300 reenactors, things are bound to go off with a bang. So Pikes and Plunder is our annual Civil War Festival and we do it every year and it's just an opportunity for us to show what life was really like during the Civil War. Newark has such amazing built heritage. We're here at the Sconce, which is one of the best earthwork defences that survives from the Civil War. And we've got the castle, so we've got lots of events happening around the town. So it's just to showcase what it was actually like to be here during the Civil War. Okay, so you have here um, musket balls, is that? Is yes, that yes, these are musket balls that would have been retrieved from, from various different parts of the body, like arm, leg, abdomen, shoulder back, neck. Horrific injuries, yeah. I'm guessing. And yeah. how would you deal with this as a barber surgeon's wife? If it, if it was buried deep within the leg, you'd um, put a tourniquet on the top of the leg and make sure the femoral artery wasn't bleeding out. And then you'd ferret around with a knife until you'd found it, dig it out with the, with the forceps and make sure that the wound was clean and you'd got all any fabric out, any wool or any linen that had been dragged in when the ball went through the clothing. Because that would fester and it would cause sepsis, septicemia and they'd die of an infection. We produce historical events and tours for various clients. Our involvement here came about when we were contacted directly by the Newark Civil War Centre and are now uh, part of the setup, managing the event on behalf of that body. England has such a rich history. In schools nowadays you don't actually study British history and we've got such a fantastic one going back thousands and thousands of years and it's a shame we don't shout about it. You open and expose the priming pan, I have some fine gunpowder in there which you fill the pan with, you close it. And this is called casting off and blowing off loose coals. This is to make sure there's no loose gunpowder that may accidentally go off. You cast about your musket. This, this little bottle here has got one charge for one shot. So you pour that down the barrel. You'll, get, you'll put a musket ball in at this point, which obviously I'm not doing today. A uh, bit of wadding. This stops the musket ball rolling out, especially if you're firing downhill. You withdraw the scouring stick. They didn't call them ramrods yet. And you make sure everything's nice and tight and compressed in the barrel and it's now ready for firing so I can hand this over to you let's do it I will put the match in for you so just lower it a little bit there right we'll test this right Stop okay so, uh... so open the pan and you squeeze the trigger slowly there you go. Wow, that's fantastic. And how accurate would a weapon like this have been? Uh, you're talking mainly of shorter ranges, so you're getting down to like a few hundred yards and closer, which is, which is probably what would have happened. You're getting ranks and files of men firing at ranks and files of men. So, you know, that, the closer you get, the worse it's going to get. So a few hundred yards tops, really. You're going to hit someone. You're going to hit someone. If, even, even if you clip them on the side of the head or the ankle, they'll fall over because it's, it's a lump of lead. I'm wearing my civilian costume, basically, and uh, other than the, the bit of armour, the gorget around my throat, and the scarf, and the heavier sword, um, I'm just in civilian costume. But those, those differences actually denote that I'm fighting from one side or the other. Judging by this colour, I'm guessing you're a royalist. That's correct, <laughs> yes. How can you tell, the, what are the differences in colour then? What would the parliamentarians have worn? The parliamentarians tends to wear blue, orange, tawnies and greens and yellows, depending on who was in charge of the, the actual army at the time. The National Civil War Centre's role is to really explain to people why 
Oh, it was such a key event in Britain's history. Lots of things that happened during the Civil War are fundamental things to us. So things like representation, constitutional monarchy, they all have their basis here. Even the whole idea of one man, one vote kind of comes back to this. And so this event really sparks that off for people and we hope that they come to the centre then to find out more. You have two printers working together. One has the clean job and dealing with the dealing with the paper, and one has the dirty job, the inky job, putting the ink on. So, what's the next stage then of this? What are we doing now? The next step stage, he's going to come pretty much where you are, so he's okay, going to step I'll over move here. Away. I'll lift up. This is called the frisket, which is like there's like a little mask, so you don't get ink where you don't want it. And he's fastening it on with some pins. And fold it back down. And now it's my turn. This is, these are called ink balls and I've um, put some of the very thick black sticky ink onto them to distribute it evenly. Mm. And then I'm going to put it onto the, the woodcuts ready for printing. So by the end of the day, they would be expected to get thousands of these. They, th these two, this 250 sheet marker was called a token and they were paid by the token. So they were very, very motivated mm. to get the printing done. I'm now going to pull this in to one my first marker. This, another name for this press was the two pull press because you push it in halfway, right. take a, a pull and then you go on to the next half. And then we see how we've done. <gasps> That's perfect. But these were really meant to be sold in the marketplace for a penny. So if they're a little bit rough, we're not going to worry too much. Wow, and this is the product of our work today. Thank you so much, Vicky and Al, for your time. I'm very proud. I've had a wonderful day here at the Pikes and Plunder event, learning about all things Civil War. But now it's time for me to go off and enjoy the splendid beauty of this wonderful medieval castle.